So currently we have the play and the pause button working perfectly. We just need to include uh, additional uh, functionality to our video player. And the first thing we want to include or add to this is our progress meter. So the way we want to do that, we want to use the progress HTML tag uh, in order to track uh, how, how far along the video is uh, once you hit the play button. So the first thing we need to do is hop over to our index.html page and let's add a new list item. And in here, instead of button, we're going to use the progress HTML5 tag. ID progress. Cool. And we want to just give it an initial value of zero because it's starting at the beginning of the video once you first load it. Excellent. And we just want to go ahead and close this uh, tag here. Progress. Excellent. So if I save this and refresh, we just get this empty bar over here. Uh, value is spelled incorrectly, so I'll make sure there's no typos. We'll save that. So we should have a blank uh, uh, bar, progress bar over here because we haven't actually hit the play button yet. So if you try to hit the play button right now, you'll see that the progress bar isn't actually working because we haven't actually connected any JavaScript to it. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's hop over to our uh, main.js file. And the first thing we need to do is establish a brand new variable to interact with. So we have the play, we have the pause, we have the video. Now we just need the progress. So we want to go ahead and create it the same way we created these variables here. So I'm going to hit return and we're going to call this one progress equals document dot query selector. And we want to go ahead and target the progress bar. Excellent. So if I look back over here, I gave it an ID of progress. So let's do that as well. So there we go. So remember this, we're targeting the tag here. We're targeting the, the ID. This is rather uh, brittle. This could uh, break if you have a web page with more than one video. But I just want to show you again as an example. You can uh, select tags, you can select classes, you can select IDs. So we're just going to leave that uh, as is for now. Uh, okay, so we just target the progress bar. So the next we need to do, we should always test to make sure we got it correctly. So console log, and we want to go ahead and output progress variable. Make sure this is not commented. So I'll put a semicolon here. Excellent. Let's refresh the page, bring up the console. There it is. Progress is being selected. Excellent. So now we can interact with it. So the progress bar, the way we do that, we still use the add event listener. Uh, however, instead of listening for a click, we're actually going to be listening for something called time update. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this here. And we want to interact with the, uh, with the, vi with the video in this case. So we want to select, we want to listen for a property that's going to happen in the video. So instead of click, we want something called time update. Cool. And then we want to initiate this functionality here. And this is going to be progress. And this, as you see here, here's a variable progress. So now we can access properties of progress. In this case, we want to access its value. So we want that val the value to be updated. So if we look back over here, here's the value current zero. So if we change this to say, uh, Five, save that, refresh. Let's all fill up. So it actually goes from zero to one. So yes, let's refresh that. There it's halfway across. If I change this to 0.25, quarter way across. But again, we will start this off at zero. Save that, refresh, cool. So let's go back over here and finish this here. So I want this value to update whenever the video, as the video plays, the time update will change. So once it does that, we want it to initiate this functionality and change the value. And what will the value be? Because we have the video, we can target the video and its property of current time. And then we want to divide that by the video dot duration. Excellent. So what does that, what does this mean? So the current time property sets or returns the current position in seconds of the audio or video playback. The duration property returns the length of the current audio video in seconds. So if you divide the two, you get the correct uh, point uh, uh, numeric uh, uh, decimal point uh, that will give you the progress in the video. So let's, let's check it out. So let's just go ahead and save this here. Make sure this is saved as well. Let's refresh. And let's make sure that we don't have any errors showing up. We'll the console here, no errors, cool. Hit the play button. So if we watch closely over here, this should start to change. Let's give it a little bit. There it goes, very, very slowly. 
There it goes. So changing the, the progress meter by clicking onto it is actually out of the scope of this class. Uh, however, um, this, that is something you can do if you were interested. So I'll leave that up to you to investigate. But it's not something I will be getting into uh, as it is uh, a bit out, out of the scope of this class. But this is that nice introduction. It gives you an idea of, of where to look to see how you can change that. So, okay, so perfect. So that's how to change the progress bar. The other thing I want to also uh, show you is how to change the volume. So let's go ahead and uh, back into our index.html. Let's create a new list item. And in here, we want to uh, create an input. So let's do that here. Input. And uh, let's give this an ID of volume. Cool. And this is a type. It's called range. Great. Close that input there. So we can leave that as is. If I refresh this page, here's the range. You can see you can move it uh, back and forth. And we want to do something very similar here uh, with the um, where the, the value of this location is. So we can actually leave this as is. Let's jump over to main.js. And what we want to do first is we want to capture the volume variable. So again, same thing with the way we did the progress. Let's do this as well. And we'll call this volume document dot query selector and because we created the id of volume let's go ahead and include that here let's save that and let's make sure we get volume working as well so actually i'll go ahead and create a new one just so we have all available to us uh, oops so you always want to be testing to make sure that um, everything that you have stored into a variable stores correctly it looks like i have a typo here uh, because if you, uh, you know, continue to code your programs without testing in between, you end up uh, running into problems and it's really becomes difficult to pinpoint exactly where that problem is. So if you're testing as you go along, it's much better that way. So let's make sure we've captured the volume variable. Oh, it looks like volume is not defined. So let's go back over here and see what's going on. So here's volume. Looks like I misspelled it again. So let's make sure that's the same. Perfect. Refresh. See, and this is why you use the console. So now I can see there's no errors here. Uh, we're still not up, up putting the volume, so we're still not getting this. So let's go back over here. Let's see here, volume is spelled incorrectly here as well. So there you go. So it's always good to test this stuff out. Let's look back in the console. Perfect, now we have it, now we can work with it. So simple typos like that are, are one of the uh, biggest reasons why we have uh, errors in our programming code. So now that we have the volume set in the variable, we can interact with it. So we want to do the exact same thing again. Copy this over, add event listener. So we want to listen for the, instead of the video, we want to get the volume, which is now the uh, input of the type range. We want to add event listener. So whenever somebody uh, changes it, so in, whenever somebody clicks on it, drags it left or right, it's going to listen for that and it's going to update uh, the parameter, the value of that range. So in here, I'm just going to click change. Cool. And we want to just add a little uh, argument here of E we're going to use. Uh, instead of uh, progress, we want this to be the video and we want this to be the volume. So we want the volume to change. So whenever somebody changes this, we want the volume, the video volume to be changed as well. So what is it going to be changed to? So we want to get that E again, current target dot value. And so what we and then divide that by 100. So what we've done here, using that E, exactly this, uh, this uh, parameter, again, this is a bit out of the scope of this class, so this is a bit of an introduction to this, but essentially what we're doing is we're getting uh, the, the, the current target, so whenever somebody clicks on this, wherever this lands and I let go, that's when it gets stores that value, and then it changes that value in video.volume. So you'll have to test this out on your own to make sure it works. Let's play that. There it goes. So now we can change the volume whenever the video plays using this uh, input controller of type range. Uh, we can also see the progress, the meter right here, and we can pause and play the, uh, play the video. So this, is, this includes no CSS styling, so that's something you, you can do. You can select these different elements and include your own branding and styling, but this is a way to create video controls that are going to be consistent across various browsers.